Greetings, uh, YouTubers. This is Mr. G-Man coming to you once again from the top secret basement of truth. Today I'm going to talk about uh, scopes for rifles and the AR coatings on them. And it doesn't mean assault rifle or automatic rifle. It means anti-reflective coatings. Right now we're looking at a Carl Zeiss multi-coated 3x9 rifle scope. And we're also going to be looking at a sniper brand name, low budget uh, scope. This originally was a $450 rifle scope. It's been a very good scope over the years. And this is a fairly new scope for me. It's a little 2x6. Um, it was less than $150. But uh, the real point of this discussion is anti-reflective coatings and using flashlights to see what the coatings look like. I go to gun shows and I look in the, uh, the scopes with my flashlights and I look for the reflections and the people selling them typically say, what are you doing with that flashlight? What are you looking for? And I say to see the anti-reflective coatings, how good they are by the reflections coming back. And they say, uh, well, what does that tell you? And I say, the whiter the light, the brighter it is, the whiter it is, then the, the uh, lower the quality of the coatings, if any, that are on the scope. So this is the Zeiss. And right now I'm using a Quark flashlight that has a moonlight mode, very low, low brightness, which is uh, helping me to show it on the camera, which it won't wash out the image because if I put it up to normal brightness somewhere uh, 100 lumens 180 lumens it'll wash out the camera the camera sensitivity is never going to be as good as the human eye so right now I'm actually on moonlight mode but what you see here is multi reflections coming back from the various lens groups of this uh, zoom lens because there's multiple lens groups in a zoom lens and every time there's a lens to air interface on either side doesn't matter you're going to get a reflection the question is will it be a dim reflection or will it be a bright reflection a good rifle scope that has multi coatings on the lenses the reflections will come back dark green maybe dark magenta purplish maybe they'll come back in a blue maybe they'll come back in a brown it depends on the type of coatings that are on the lens a lot of them come back in multiple layers of green and that's because green is the the strongest color that the human eye sees we have the most receptor cones to see green and so they, uh, the vendors will put a anti-reflective multi-layer coating on there to enhance what you see in green. And so the coatings come back and reflect in green. Now this low budget $150 or less um, scope with the very dim light appears to be not much worse than that $450 original price. Zeiss, but to the human eye, you can see the difference. This is brighter set of reflections to the eye that again, the camera sensitivity will never pick up. So I'm not trying to prove to you with the camera here how to do it. What I'm doing is showing you how you can do it yourself. If you have a flashlight, LED flashlight is good. Incandescence, they're okay, but if it's a bright one, it may be too bright and wash out, uh, you know, too much reflection for you to see. So what you want to do is typically have an LED that you can turn the brightness down a little bit. You really don't want more than 50 lumens when you do this and have light reflecting back in your eye. But you want to shine the flashlight in there and then move your eye around until you see all the reflections. And you're looking to see how many come back and what colors they are. The brighter they are, the cheaper the coatings on the lens. It's that simple. If you're seeing bright white light or a very light pinkish color coming back to you, that means either no coatings or a single coating of magnesium fluoride, which is not that good of a coating to, to uh, prevent the reflection of light. So when you're shooting, if the sun's behind you, you don't want sunlight 
bouncing off the lens into your eye and making it hard to see what you're seeing through the scope. And yes, this also works in both directions. Uh, a good, right? So this is looking through the front and we can see the light coming out the back. But a good lens, right? You look at it from either direction and the multi-layer coatings is going to be such that you're going to see dim light come back in reflections from the scope and not bright white light. You are going to see reflections. There's no way to get around it, but they don't, you don't want them to be white light. You don't want them to be bright. You don't want them to be light pink. You want them to be very dark, preferably green or brown or multicolors. The, um, this is the, uh, the sniper scope. And I got to put the cap on the back. The one you just looked at prior to that was the Zeiss. It's the best quality scope that I happen to have in the house. But this is the uh, sniper scope. Again, I've got this flashlight on a very, very low moonlight mode. If I turn it up to just one level higher, which is only about 20 lumens, as far as the camera is concerned, it's, it starts to get too bright. The other thing you don't want to see is reflection of the inside surface because they didn't paint it with a good flat black paint to prevent all reflection. Some, some scopes I've seen, you look inside the front of the tube and you see uh, the glare off the paint because it wasn't a good flat black paint job on the inside of the tube and you see glare coming back from a glossy thing. So I see magenta reflections, I see blue reflections, I see green reflections, mostly green to the human eye, but some magenta. The only other thing I want to mention is normally the reticle itself may not have a coating on it. And you may see one reflection coming back from the reticle. You may see one reflection coming back from the reticle of the scope that is uh, white. Because the reticle itself, if it's on a glass plate, uh, may not have any coatings on the reticle itself. It may have a single layer magnesium fluoride coating on it. And so that might have a reflection, but the optics should have the optics should have um, multiple layers of AR coatings. What you want is multiple layers of AR coatings and they come back uh, very dark green or blue, even reddish. Some are brown, especially on the front. If it's got rain guard, you might see a brown reflection from the front of the lens. And so I would say if you see a brown reflection in the front and green reflections in the back, it probably has rain guard. Bushnell does that. I've seen brown reflections of their scopes. I looked at an $1,100 Zeiss uh, Divari, I think it's called, scope. And it came back with blue and red and green reflections. And that's to make multicolor uh, anti-reflection so that the actual transmission of, of white light, which is all light colors is better than just sending back green so that when you're looking at browns of deer and browns of trees in the forest the natural shades of browns come out better because the anti-reflect coating is what they call broadband to give you a better view of white light through the scope and not reflections of light from stuff behind you into your eye so you can do this yourself. If you have a flashlight that has a low power mode and next time you're at a gun show or you're looking at your rifle scopes, you can shine the light in there and move the light around and move, the, move your eye around and look for the reflections and see what comes back. Again, the brighter it is, that means the cheaper the quality of the anti-reflective coatings on your scope. You want something that's very dim. 
I have flashlights that have normal beams. I have flashlights that are kind of like flood beams, soft, floody beams, as opposed to more of a spot. Here you see uh, more of a spot with this flashlight, but I can turn it down low. Here's more of a floody beam. Normally the floody beam flashlight held up close will work better. Or something that just has a low beam, low power intensity, because again, you're shining it into glass and there are going to be some reflections and you don't want to blind yourself. You don't need a lot of light. Uh, if it's a really, really good scope, it's still going to have some reflections coming back like this one does, but you can see they're going to be different colors and they better not be white. You don't want white light coming back to you. If you have white light coming back to you, that tells you it's a very cheap scope. When you get out into the field, you're going to get a lot of glare. When you try to look at something at a very long distance, you're going to get a lot of milky cloudiness in the image. And that's going to make it so you don't want to look through the scope. Okay, I hope this explains what I'm trying to say in this part one of uh, this series. This is really very difficult to do in general, which is why I haven't done it before. But this is uh, Mr. G-Man saying uh, this is the completion of this part of the testing. Thank you all for uh, watching and listening.